I need to give you a body of work so you can understand. Let me go to trap so he can teach me. Let me go to trap so I can understand. The reason why we can't effectively dominate the market is because we don't truly understand what's going on in the market. And we don't understand what's going on in the market. How can we function inside of the chaos? Trappers, what's good, fam? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Today, we're going to get into ETF investing. ETF investing. But before we get into that, listen, I need you to like. I need you to subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps build the page out. It's, as y'all can see, we are being super consistent with giving you all the content. We are being super consistent with uh, peeling back layers on his investing game. So check it out. We're gonna talk about ETF investing. So if you don't know what an ETF is, it is an exchange traded fund. So it's a basket of stocks uh, from a specific sector or that performs a certain way that funds have put together. So when they put these stocks together, what happens is you as an ETF investor benefit from the investments that the fund has made. So let me give you an example right quick. So let's say you bought into Wall Street Trap First Fund. So this is our ETF. Let's say our fund had 30 companies in it. Well, you want to look at the 30 companies, but the first thing you're going to see is the top five or the top 10. So let's say you had NVIDIA, NVDA. Let's say you had uh, Chipotle. Y'all know that's my baby. Let's say we had... Lululemon. Let's say we had Apple, because the Apple a day keeps the poverty away. And then let's say we had Tesla. Right? One, two, three, four, five. So this is our top five. And so this will be the bulk of where the money probably is at in the fund. But let's say the fund has a total of 30 companies. Right? So the fund may have a total of 30 companies in it. These may be the top five holdings. Now, if you go on Yahoo Finance or something, it'll show you, like, the top ten holdings. But you won't see the percentages. So first you're going to go to holdings, and then you're going to see the percentages in each one. So it'll be like, let's say we had NVIDIA, you know, 15.01%. And then let's say we had Chipotle at maybe 12.22%. Then we had Lululemon at probably 10.2%. Three zero percent, and then Apple at maybe eight point zero zero percent, and then Tesla at five point zero zero percent. It has to come out to a hundred percent. So now you see what your top five at, and so now everything under that will now probably be less than five. Everything will be under five percent. So now you understand that if Nvidia makes a big move, you know that this ETF gonna move hard. If NVIDIA and Chipotle moving together, you know that this stock, on this ETF probably going to move hard. If you get all five of them moving in the same direction in one day, this ETF probably going to bounce real hard. And then these other uh, 25 companies may be something like 4%, 2%, 1%, 0.9%. So you want to pay attention to this. So we'll get back to this right here. Your big... Your big dealers in the ETF space are Vanguard. Vanguard is probably going to have the lowest expense ratio. And I'll get into that. I'll get into expense ratio. The next one is BlackRock, which actually has the most assets under management. And BlackRock shows up in the word in the ETF of iShares. So BlackRock shows up under iShares ETF. The next one going to be Schwab. One of the most famous ones for Schwab is SCHD. This is the dividend one that everybody loves. And for Vanguard, the most powerful two is VOO and VTI. Those are the two that everybody knows. So these are the people who put these out. But then you also have SPDR, which is Spider. And that's the one who have uh, SPY you'll have spider under the SPY. So these are your big five, Vanguard, BlackRock, Swab, 
Builders and SPDR. Spot. Now, Builders stands for Basket of Listed Depository Receipts, which simply means foreign stocks traded on American index. That's all that means. Foreign stocks, basket of listed of depository receipts, foreign stocks traded on the American exchange. That's all that means. So when you see BLDRS, that's the Builders ETF, Swab, SCHD, BlackRock is under iShares, Vanguard is going to be with a B, a V, um, and Spider is going to be with the, um, you'll have XLY, XLK, XLF, XLV, things like that. Like, we the only one do a live show with this much production. Like, we bar none, we just different. We not in competition with nobody. To see somebody that looks like us talk about stocks, because I had never seen that before. You know, we buy during the drought, and a recession is the best time to buy. I feel a whole bunch of wealth up in here, y'all. Someone who gives me raw and uncut information. I know how to break down a company, I know how to invest. Being a more confident investor. That Wall Street does look like us, no cliche. I will no longer fertilize my fears. That financial trauma has to be broken. We got to understand that we are more than consumers. One share at a time can change your life, change your life. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're printing money, baby. I think over the last couple years, um, just being in America has made everyone realize that there's no such thing as job security. It's time to take accountability. It's time to be responsible. It's time to make the sacrifices. It's time to put in the work because this time it done got work because this time ain't no saving you. So right here, uh, VTI, which like I said, that's some of the biggest ones that's known. So VTI uh, deals with the world. So this is the, the United States stock market. This is the whole globe, VTI. This is the world ETF right here. This is for the world, right? This is a world one. So if you want to be safe, you just want to bet on the world. You want to just bet on the economy of the world, VTI. Now, VOO. This focuses only on the S&P 500. VOO only focuses on the S&P 500, which is the top 500 stocks in America. That's all the VOO focuses on. Next, you got VGK. This only focuses on the European market. This only focuses on the European market. And then you have VPL, which focuses on the Vanguard Pacific part of the market. Now, of course, there's so many, there's so many ETFs in the game, right? I think right now there's over like 3,000. This is the most ETF there's ever had in the world. There's over 3,000 ETFs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, because people are realizing that it's better to invest in like a bunch of companies, but not an index fund than actual uh, individual stocks. So like, I know they just created one for the banks. JP Morgan just created one, JEPI. People going crazy about that because it pay a high dividend yield, right? And so that's what's happening right now. A lot of companies are creating these ETFs. But what I did a lot of homework and realized was people are taking money out of the ETFs right now. Right now, they have more money sitting on the sideline than ever before. So let's just put that in mind. Also, when you're looking at ETFs, you want a low P.E. ratio. The reason why you want a low P.E. ratio with ETFs because unlike stocks like NVIDIA and stocks like... Um, Microsoft, the PE is telling you you're paying a dollar for, you're paying so much money for a dollar's, one dollar the company profit. So if a company had a, a 46 PE, then you are paying $46 for one dollar of that company's money. You don't want to do that with an ETF. And the difference, the reason why is because a company like NVIDIA that may have a high PE, also the stock is moving like crazy. Uh, a company like Apple, Right? These companies have, you know, their P.E. is explainable, even though they may be high, but because the stock is moving at a certain way, you can get that. Now, with an ETF, you're not getting that much movement. You're not getting stock-like movement because there's so many stocks in the ETF, 
it always has to balance out, which is why it's always important to see who that big five is so you can know who's actually moving the ETF, right? That's important. You want to know who that big five is so you can know what companies are moving this ETF the way it's supposed to move. So with ETF, I'm going to always tell you go with low P-E ratios. Low P-E ratios, the better. All right, now we're going to get into my big six. Should put this right here. Big six for ETFs. Big six for ETFs. So first is the holdings. That's what I showed you, right? You always want to know what the holdings are. You always want to know what the holdings are. The next thing you want to know, percentage of holdings. So I told you all that with the first two, right? You want to know what the holdings are and you want to know what the percentage of the holdings are. But also, here's why, too. If you had $100 invested in this fund, guess what you know? Your first $15 went here. That's how your $100 went. So $15 went to NVIDIA using my fund. $12 went to Chipotle. $10 went to Lululemon. $8 went to Apple. $5 went to Tesla. So if you had this fund, these percentages not only tell you how much of the stock is inside of the company in the fund, but it also tells you now how your money is being broke down. So if you had 10,000, 15, it goes like that. So that's, you want to know that for sure. The next thing you want to know is the expense ratio. You want to know what is the expense ratio. Now, the expense ratio is going to be something like this, 0 0.18. So it's like you're paying uh, $18 for every like $10,000 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? every $10,000 invested, you'll pay that a year. You pay the expense ratio a year. Now, here's the thing. As we get into this one right here, active, is the fund active or passive? Active funds, you're going to pay more because they're moving that around all the time. Passive funds, you're going to pay less with the expense ratio because the passive funds only move it once a year. So a passive fund going to move companies around once a year. An active fund going to move companies around whenever they see fit. And because of that, you're going to pay more for that. So you always want to see if the fund is active or if the fund is passive. Next, you want to look at the annualized return. So one thing I'm going to go look at is the five-year, three-year, one-year. I'm going to go look at that. What if they return in five years, three years, and one year? And the reason why that's important is if you go look at an ETF and the returns are negative in a five-year, you don't want to invest in that. You want to look at a body of work. So I'm going to go look at the five-year return. Okay, bet. Look at the five-year return. It may be 70%. That ain't really bad for an ETF. You know what I'm saying? Well, it ain't really bad for an ETF. Let's say you go to three years and it's at like 40%, 50%. You, you know you're getting moving out of it. You know what I'm saying? One year, ETF may give you anywhere between 10 you know, it could give you like 10%, 8%, something like that. You know what I'm saying? But if you get an ETF that got negative returns, you don't want that. So you want to look at the returns. And again, that's just me showing you something. You know, it might be something like five year may give you 50%. You know, three year may give you something like 30%. One year may give you something like, you know, anywhere between 8 and 10%, something like that. That's okay. That's an ETF. So you're not worrying about that. That's pretty decent for you. It's giving you consistent 10-year returns if it's giving you that. You are right with that. And lastly, fund goals. What is the goal behind the person who, who's managing the fund? Are they looking to expand? Are they What type of stocks are they looking for to put inside the fund? That way you can understand if the fund fits who you are as an investor, right? Does this fund and does the goals of the fund fit me as an investor and fit what I'm trying to do? So if you look at QQQ, QQQ is based on what? Technology. Am I a tech stock investor? I may don't like that. I may like that. I may not. If you look at the trap fund, it looked like we dealing with growth stocks. You know what I'm saying? They have the Russell 1000. So you want to pay attention to what type of goals and activity that the fund has for you. Man, I hope this breakdown really got to y'all. I hope y'all learned a lot right this right now. Listen, man, it's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper, and we breaking down ETF investing. Listen, man, make sure you like this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments if you like this type of content. We definitely going to have some more coming for you. We got a lot in the chamber, man. I love y'all. 
but see you in the trap.